Hi, my name is Terry Wright. I am 59 years of age. I live in Arkansas, North Little Rock, Arkansas. I have cystic fibrosis. I'm married to this beautiful young lady named Michelle Wright. <laughs> my name is Jalen Cooper. I'm from Little Rock, Arkansas, and I'm 25 years old and I have CF. Hi, uh, my name is Diana Lee Mathis, and I am from North Little Rock, Arkansas, and I am Jalen Mother and Advocate. <laughs> I'm Everett Rice, and I live in Rosedale, California, which is about uh, 20 miles northeast of uh, Sacramento. And I'm actually in realty from the Bay Area, the San Francisco Bay Area, and I lived there for the first 19 years of my life. And um, I live with cystic fibrosis. My name is Jennifer Taylor Kauser. I'm an adult and pediatric pulmonologist at National Jewish Health in Denver, Colorado, where I mostly take care of adults with cystic fibrosis and conduct and lead clinical research studies. Together, we co-founded the National Organization of African Americans with Cystic Fibrosis. And our goal, our dream is just to focus on health equity and to help educate um, engage and raise awareness in assisted fibrosis community, especially for people of color, indigenous individuals, and of course, African Americans. Cystic fibrosis results from mutations in the cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator, or CFTR gene. The CFTR gene tells the cell to make a protein that's also called the CFTR protein. That protein we know sits at the cell surface in membranes throughout the body and acts as a chloride channel. And so when you need to change the amount of liquid that's sitting at the top of a cell, it does that by letting chloride go through and then water can follow it. So when that channel doesn't work, there's no way to regulate that thin layer of liquid that sits over many cells. Over time, what happens is that when that thick liquid happens, infection sets in, and then your body tries to fight it off with inflammation. And that causes damage to the airways and to the gut, and over time that builds up. My diagnosis is actually a funny story. Um, I was actually diagnosed at nine. Jalen was diagnosed at the age of 16 months old. Um, she had all the symptoms there of uh, the sweaty, the digestive disorder. Um, and we also had low birth weight. And we also was um, going back and forth in the hospital staying six weeks, six to eight weeks at a time from birth up until she got diagnosed. Um, but I was sort of misdiagnosed. I was diagnosed from birth with chronic uh, bronchiolitic asthmatic. So I've always been doing treatments. I've always been on inhalers. I've always had lung issues. Um, and I was spending like every week in allergy clinic just trying to find out what was getting me sick. I kind of stayed sick all the time growing up. You know, as an infant, in and out the hospital, counseling, stomach pain, uh, severe stomach pain, abdominal pain, uh, just very severe burning and throbbing in my uh, dominant area. Certain experiences, you know, like dealing with kids who are normal, didn't really start to bother me um, until I guess, until I started going to school. And for the most part, I was, I was a pretty energetic kid. Um, it was just until once it was time for me to go into the hospital because I was having a flare up or an exacerbation that reality set in like, oh, I have this and just dealing with certain emotions about it. And it wasn't until really those times where I felt like that I was different. I'm kind of a shy person. I don't like to feel like I'm different from people. So sometimes I choose to just opt out of talking about it until it's just really necessary. And I'm still kind of like that today, and I'm trying not to be, but it's hard. <laughs> My mom uh, eventually started taking me to the children's hospital, and it was just kind of somewhat saying that uh, I have a virus, ulcers, and they would just kind of treat me um, with Dilraw and Finnegan, just kind of give me shots, 
kind of ease the pain. It would ease the pain up a little bit. But uh, throughout the time, it just starts back over again. I guess the long story short part of it is, I am blessed to have a twin brother um, who does not have cystic fibrosis. And if you look at me, I look really uh, I look like the average size adult or male. Um, and so that I think that's part of what created some confusion when I was a kid, because I my size was typical. It wasn't I wasn't perceived as stunted, and it was actually the fact that I had a twin brother who was twice my size that the doctor who actually in them diagnosed me was going, wait, his brother is twice his size, and he's having absorption problems, and he's having other digestive problems, and he has major lung infections, and that. My doctor at the time who was calling all over the world trying to figure out what was wrong with me um talked to this doctor actually she was talking to somebody else and he overheard her and while i was sitting in the allergy clinic and this weird doctor walks in looks at my hand and the next thing i know i'm going to get a, a sweat test um and so within two weeks i was diagnosed and it was a battle um just getting a diagnosed because her primary care physician really had gave up on Jalen. Uh, he could not find out what was wrong with Jalen. And he told me that he couldn't help my daughter anymore. And he just didn't know what was wrong with my daughter. And he pretty much just closed the, closed the book and walked out the office and left me sitting in the office with my daughter. It was just terrifying and terrible. I, I used to just wish that I would just die. That's how I was really feeling in, in, in my heart because the pain was so severe. And, and, and the more I think about it, you know, I get a little emotional about it because there's some stuff in me, I guess probably in every cystic fibrosis patient that they harvesting, you know, and, and, and just need to be treated. They need to come out and deal with it. But let's back this up. Um, when Jalen was born, she, had digestive disorder problem going on, GI problem. And we were being seen by a GI specialist. And uh, her GI specialist was concerned about my family background history and which was given to the genetics at the hospital when Jalen was going back and forward, back and forward, being admitted in the hospital under treatment. The GI specialist was the one that opened the door to find out this diagnose because all along she had a feeling this is what Jalen had was cystic fibrosis. And, and um, what she did was we went to her office and she told me be prepared to stay and be prepared to uh, have, Jay she's going to have Jalen admitted back in the hospital. And what she did, she reached out to some of her colleagues in Texas because she talked to me about cystic fibrosis and she have a feeling this is what Jalen have in cystic fibrosis. If not, she is going to treat her as a CF patient because she have all the symptoms and she needed help because Jalen's body was deteriorating. And what makes it so complicated is that the classic signs were always there. And to go 54 years and not be diagnosed simply because of one's race and ethnicity is devastating. And because he was African-American, and this is what, 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 where health equity comes into the picture because health equity should be about everybody getting equal, fair, unbiased health care regardless of race, regardless of gender, regardless of socioeconomic biasness. I, even with that diagnosis with Jalen, uh, I still was going through changes with some medical doctors I had to see with her. And when we was coming back through the ER more, of, oh, I didn't know cystic, fibro cystic fibrosis was common in Black America. No, it's the father Caucasian. And uh, no, no, the father's not Caucasian. Every time he would eat, he would throw it up. Every time he would eat, we have to go to the emergency room. And I remember early on, early on, 
within months of meeting each other. And because of my pharmaceutical background, I said, you have pneumonia, clear pneumonia. And when we went to the walk-in clinic, I remember it like yesterday, the doctor said, if you were not black, I would say you have cystic fibrosis. And I remember us saying, well, if it's not cystic fibrosis, what is it? CF can affect many, many parts of the body. So people, when they have CF that affects their lungs, have cough and sputum production, they can have chest pain, difficulty breathing when they exercise, they can have recurrent infections in their sinuses. Because CF also affects the gut, it makes it difficult to absorb calories. So people have a lot of trouble absorbing calories and have to eat much more than the average person. They also have difficulty absorbing the vitamins that are soluble in fat. And so therefore they can have vitamin deficiencies. They can have osteoporosis and osteopenia, so thin bones because they don't absorb enough vitamins. Also, they can have really salty tasting skin. And that's because the chloride channel isn't working in the skin either. I used to resent as a child growing up with CF, watching um, all these medical people coming in and looking at me like I was an anomaly. I mean, it was like, you have CF? How did that happen? I mean, I mean, and these are medical students. I mean, so our the hospital I grew up in was a nursing hospital, a nursing teaching hospital, and a medical teaching hospital. So I spent years every in the hospital dealing with people who just never seen a black person with CF. We can't go back in time and right. take back the pain and the suffering, but we can do our part to right. make sure that we are educating others and helping them understand not only the short-term impact of health disparities, but the long-term impact. So if you think about this, if I'm the first person they meet after all their studies, and I'm the first person they meet with CF, and they're just awe and shocked of it, and what do you think that's telling about what, what the community itself that don't have the don't have the exposure to the few Blacks like myself who have CF? And then you hear the story that I've heard of people who don't get diagnosed in their 30s or 40s. And I'm going to be honest with you. If I had to wait till I was 30 or 40 to be diagnosed, I wouldn't be here. If you look specifically in the United States CF patient registry, you'll see that about 4.7% of the CF population in the U.S. is African American. So the question remains is, are there other people who are African-American with cystic fibrosis who have been misdiagnosed. And I would say undoubtedly that is the case. I have diagnosed people as late as in their 70s with cystic fibrosis who were told that they had asthma or any other disease besides cystic fibrosis. And in fact, have been told that their symptoms seem like CF, but they couldn't possibly have CF because they were African-American. But we're here to make a difference and to make sure the community understands that anyone, regardless of your race, your ethnicity, your hair, your values, your beliefs, can have cystic fibrosis. Considering just the history of African Americans, we're often overlooked anyway. And then sometimes, just depending on how some people who come from African American communities were raised, or they may not have enough resources, they may not even know how to advocate for themselves. So that's why I think it's so important to have research and have resources out there so that way, to, to be able to have it there so that way for the people who may not know that it's there and they won't be missed. You know, as I said before, I was blessed to have a twin brother that gave some indicator to the to my CF doctor um, that the average doctors, my, I was with the doctor for a few years and she could not figure it out and was, and really had no idea. So I am living proof that there's an example of misdiagnoses or not assuming someone, not checking someone who has CF just because of their, their racial makeup. So we wanna make sure the healthcare community is doing what they need to, to just do their job, diagnose based on the signs and symptoms and not based on the color of somebody's skin. There are also health disparities because of systemic issues in this country that limit access to care, that limit insurance because of limitations on which job you can have and where you can work. And there's also a lack of awareness by physicians. So again, 
this disease was taught in medical school and in nursing school and in respiratory therapy school as a disease that occurred in white people and not in people of color. And that really has to change for us to continue to diagnose people properly and diagnose them early so that they don't suffer from poor outcomes. Because we do know that African-Americans are more likely to have lower lung function when they have cystic fibrosis and have an increased risk of death. And it's because of these late diagnoses and these health disparities. Also, Black people are less likely to be included in the research that's being done to discover new therapies. And that also really affects outcomes and needs to be changed. I think that for people who have CF and especially more for people who are in, who are a minority with CF, just what I do, I take things day by day and do the best that you can. And then at times when you feel that you're at your optimal health, to do anything that you want to do and take that opportunity if you have it. So, and don't let anybody say that you can't do it. So let me just give you this last thought. Um, and it's mainly because living with such a purpose my entire life, the one thing that gets in the way of you really living a full life is when you start living and being defined by your CF or any health condition you have. You are not your diagnosis. That is a real big issue. Quickly, when you have CF, everyone wants to talk about that, but you are so much more than that. Um, and so if I can say anything, while well, I'm going to encourage you, hey, do your, go get tested, go go to the doctor, get do all the things you have to do to make sure you're healthy. Just make sure you understand one thing, your CF is not you. You are who you are and CF is a part of who you are. Don't ever let that or let somebody else define you as just being a CF patient because you're so much more than that.